offered by former prosecutor Sidney Powell, who has also served as General Mike Flynn's lawyer. For more than a week, Powell has been all over conservative media with the following story. This election was stolen by a collection of international leftists who manipulated vote tabulating software in order to flip millions of votes from Donald Trump to Joe Biden. The other day on television, Powell said of Trump that when the fraud is finally uncovered, quote, I think we'll find he had at least 80 million votes. In other words, rigged software stole about 7 million votes in this election. Here's some of what Powell said today about the software. One of its most characteristic features is, is its ability to flip votes. It can set and run an algorithm that probably ran all over the country to take a certain percentage of votes from President Trump and flip them to President Biden, which we might never have uncovered had the votes for President Trump not been so overwhelming in so many of these states that it broke the algorithm that had been plugged into the system. And that's what caused them to have to shut down in the states they shut down in. That was a few hours ago, but Sidney Powell has been saying similar things for days. On Sunday night, we texted her after watching one of her segments. What Powell was describing would amount to the single greatest crime in American history. Millions of votes stolen in a day. Democracy destroyed. The end of our centuries-old system of self-government. Not a small thing. Now, to be perfectly clear, we did not dismiss any of it. We don't dismiss anything anymore, particularly when it's related to technology. We've talked to too many Silicon Valley whistleblowers. We've seen too much. After four years, this may be the single most open-minded show on television. We literally do UFO segments, not because we're crazy or had even been interested in the subject, but because there is evidence that UFOs are real and everyone lies about it. There's evidence that a lot of things that responsible people use to dismiss out of hand as ridiculous are in fact real. And we don't care who mocks it. The louder the Yale Political Science Department and the staff of the Atlantic Magazine scream, conspiracy theory, the more interested we tend to be. That's usually a sign you're over the target. A lot of people with impressive sounding credentials in this country are frauds. They have no idea what they're doing. They're children posing as authorities. And when they're caught, they lie and then they blame you for it. We see that every day. It's the central theme of this show and will continue to be. So that's a long way of saying we took Sidney Powell seriously. We had no intention of fighting with her. We've always respected her work. We simply wanted to see the details. How could you not want to see them? So we invited Sidney Powell on the show. We would have given her the whole hour. We would have given her the entire week, actually, and listened quietly the whole time at rapt attention. That's a big story. But she never sent us any evidence, despite a lot of requests, polite requests, not a page. When we kept pressing, she got angry and told us to stop contacting her. When we checked with others around the Trump campaign, people in positions of authority, they told us Powell has never given them any evidence either, nor did she provide any today at the press conference. Powell did say that electronic voting is dangerous, and she's right, we're with her there. But she never demonstrated that a single actual vote was moved illegitimately by software from one candidate to another, not one. So why are we telling you this? We're telling you this because it's true. And in the end, that's all that matters, the truth. It's our only hope, it's our best defense. And it's how we're different from them. We care what's true, and we know you care too. That's why we told you. Maybe Sidney Powell will come forward soon with details on exactly how this happened and precisely who did it. Maybe she will, we are certainly hopeful that she will. What happened with the vote counting this month and at the polling places in Detroit and the polling places in Philadelphia and so much else actually matters. It matters no matter who you voted for. It matters whether or not you think this election is already over. Until we know the answers to those questions conclusively and we can agree on them, this country will not be united. So that was Tucker Carlson from earlier this evening, basically saying that Trump's legal team and specifically Sidney Powell has not provided any evidence of their claims that this election was taken unduly from Donald Trump, whether it's her claims that it's machines or George Soros or Hugo Chavez or Elvis Presley, potentially, as uh, Geraldo Rivera noted earlier today, she hasn't actually provided any evidence. And what Tucker Carlson's saying there, and I loathe to acknowledge that he's right, but he is here, that 
if if she was onto something, it would be the biggest crime in American history. In, in, in one of the biggest anti-democratic, most sophisticated anti-democratic efforts in literal world history. We're talking votes in the millions here in a developed world power nation with all these supposed checks and balances. If this was real, it would be one of the biggest events in the last 500 years. I'm not exaggerating. It's massive. And there, there's nothing. She's got nothing. There is absolutely nothing from her or Jenna Ellis or Rudy Giuliani or Trump himself or anybody in the Trump family. There's nothing. And so Tucker Carlson, on the one hand, is doing the right thing here by saying, look, all we want is proof of your claims. You know, we'll bring them to the audience if we have proof of your claims. He's like, he's like we, we talk about UFOs on this show. I don't know why he's, he's going on about UFOs, but I think he's, his point is like, look, we'll talk about things even if they're a little bit off the rocker, but you got to give us something. And basically, Tucker Carlson is saying there's a greater probability that there are aliens among us right now than Sidney Powell's claims actually being accurate. And that's really, really sad on behalf of Trump and his legal team and his campaign. And I think, again, this is part of the broader trend that I've been noticing, which is that there's a real tension at Fox News, that the various wings of Fox News and even down to the individual hosts and anchors and reporters at Fox News aren't really sure what to do right now. You have some of them, I know Lou Dobbs is mostly at Fox Business, but it's part of the umbrella, who are 150% on the Trump train, that are basically like, why isn't everyone doing what they can to stop Joe Biden from taking this from the Donald Trump? Like, why, why isn't this happening? Why aren't we working harder? He 100% seems to believe that this was taken from Trump. On the other hand, you have a lot of reporters you know, that are like Sandra Smith and, and Chris Wallace that are basically like and have been for weeks that are like, this is over. Sure, if there's claims, bring them to us, I guess. We'll report on them. But this election is every bit as over as the 2016 election was, which is to say, as soon as the the media, AP, CNN, Fox, etc., called the election, it was over. Everything happening now is a formality. Uh, and, and if there are claims, they should be heard by relevant authorities, but the election's over. Biden won, and Trump's time as president is coming to an end. But in between there, you have some people that are sort of trying to, like, both sides the issue. A lot of influential hosts, like Laura Ingram, will at times call Biden president-elect, but then also have quote-unquote anonymous poll workers to talk about, you know, what they've seen, some shady doings outside polling stations. And so I'm not sure if they know what to do. And Tucker Carlson seems to be taking the Band-Aid off here, seems to be ripping the Band-Aid off by saying, look, we can't tolerate this conspiracy theory mongering anymore. The time has come to put up or shut up. Give me evidence or go away. And I think Tucker, even Tucker Carlson, the guy whose show is so controversial Basically, only the My Pillow guy will advertise on it now. Droves of advertisers refuse to associate with Tucker Carlson, given some of his statements. Even he is like, look, I got to have some credibility in the coming months and years. And if I really try to go down with the Trump ship here, claiming until inauguration day that this election was wrong, he's like, that's going to, it's good. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to be embarrassed for the rest of my life. And so basically what he's saying is true. Look, at some point we have to accept these results. Like as a country, we got to accept them. That's how bad it is. Even Tucker Carlson, one of the most far right ideologues on Fox News is like, this is over. That's when you know it's done. You've lost Tucker. You've lost the plot. Maybe Trump still has his sycophants with Lou Dobbs and at OAN and at Newsmax. But when you're losing key cogs in the right wing media, you lose your ability to build legitimacy for any kind of like coup or whatever you're trying to pull. 
It's not just about formal legislative power. It's actually about convincing enough people that what you're doing is meaningful. And when you have Tucker Carlson saying that Trump's lawyer is basically getting angry at him and his staff because she won't you know, answer his questions, because how dare Tucker Carlson ask her questions? You are not building legitimacy for whatever you're trying to do, which is get courts and legislatures and whatever to flip election results against the vote of the American people. So this is a key moment. And I think that what you're seeing here is indicative. The right wing media ecosystem is not necessarily ready to reckon with what the post Trump environment looks like. And it could cause a lot of issues going forward.